Anyway, <laughs> on all serious <laughs> matters, welcome hey. everybody to week number seven of Tales of Fumbles of Fortunes here on Tales of Gaming Addiction, where we are all dying in a summer heat wave. Except for Foxy. Except me. Except the <laughs> rogue. <laughs> Curse his finish evasion. No. Yes. I didn't realise we all had disadvantage on heat. Exactly. <laughs> Hell, the Constitution says. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that should oh. certainly be a DD thing, actually. The failure Constitution save. <laughs> Red hot tan. <laughs> Someone British. slapped it on the back. One D4 uh, slap. Just, just new races. <laughs> you are now the English race. You get advantage no. in wet weather on perception checks and disadvantage in hot weather. This sounds real. Um, this, how about like... me? Because there is. Uh, sometimes there is like uh, 30 degrees um, in the summertime, maybe even 40, and um, in the winter time it's minus 20 to minus 40. Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, <laughs> Ed is right here, but I suppose for friends it'd be like advantage in colder climates. The aspect of metal. <laughs> <laughs> aspect of <laughs> ice and snow. Anyway, so last week, for those that missed and want a quick recap, uh, <laughs> our wonderful band of players started venturing into the Ember Mine and had dealt with a few nasties down there, some deep gnomes. Not going to put the name this time around. Uh, so on and so forth on behalf of Ironbrand, a powerful merchant within the city itself. Um, Last week you harvested the gazer and took some of its eye stalks. You then went on to see Iron Brand, who was uh, sad that things went so bad and a lot of his crew seemed to have up and left. Was a bit annoyed because the deep gnomes he found were all branded and belonged to Goldmire. So instead of hanging around to fight, he's actually going to sell all this stuff, move to... Uh, Emberstone, which is a much nicer part of the world, and from there, uh, you know, rebuild his industry and finish his Iron Juggernaut project, which is going to be an amazing monster when I finally stat it. <laughs> and going quickly through my notes, so uh, you guys also spoke with the council and got your main quest thing tied up there, you were given 600 gold pieces mm -hmm. and a portion of the map to like your druid hiding ground if you wish to venture for it uh, but Goldmire wasn't going to give you supplies as part of your trade agreement for your little town so you've now plotted a way of getting paid back. Either A, dropping her foundry and her warehouses, blasting through the wall and running home. Or B, mm, down with the bourgeoisie. Why? I think, <laughs> have I missed anything out there? Do correct me. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. I think. In which case then, guys, what do you want to do? It's currently the middle of the day. <laughs> the weather is nice. <coughs> we have um, we have the ember stone with us, don't we? Uh, we have one uh, bag left, don't we? Bag. Yeah, we've got one bag left. Mm -hmm. Right. We do so, indeed. Uh, before we even start doing anything, we need a final vote on what we want to do. Yes. So, I mean, I'm a big personal fan of this whole down with uh, civilization thing, but you know that's that's just kind of more my jam. We need to do what's more feasible, to be honest. <laughs> Any I mean, other thoughts from anyone? I don't mind either way. If I can still make sweets. I'm glad you have gonna, your priorities, Marlon. I was going oh. to say, um, I was going to say, Marlon, you. <laughs> like, if we had to convince maybe some of the, like, 
other companies or maybe the council members themselves, what are the chances that you'd be able to uh, make a few sweets as a kind of form of bribery? Like, like as a kind of little offering to them? Hmm. Like, you don't have to do this for us, but... But we have, we have, what, hard-boiled sweets? Well, that could sweeten the deal. Quite literally. Prison. We this gets out they're devilishly tasty. Mm. Nils, I'm going to turn you into a little burger in a second if you're going to stop making puns. <laughs> I was, I was like, yes. I thought about like hours ago, and I was like, yes, can't wait to say that. This yeah. is totally what Nils is saying, and not Tashi. <laughs> this is the, this is, this is what Tashi is saying, not Nils. But <laughs> anyways, carry on. Puns aside, carry on. <laughs> Gonna edit Neil's so, character sheet. Bribing. Gonna go from warlock to bard. <laughs> take, I take a level in bard. Um, <laughs> High uh, five. <laughs> um, yeah. So was that my level. Okay, Christy. I'm here. I was I was addressing you. You you started talking. And that, and I just said Marlon produces a large jar of boiled sweets wrapped up in a bow. Oh, here's one I made earlier. Excellent. Yes. Ooh, excellent. Nice. Well, <laughs> I suppose it's a start. I mean, the easier option is that she just to raid her shit and blow the fuck out of the city. Exactly. It's it's a simple matter of whether we want to shock the system so much that we can pretty much just win everyone over, get everything we want, and walk away as glorified heroes. Or whether we don't give a crap about that, we just want what we want back from the, vill from the village we started at, and then move on our merry way. Well, I don't think it's going to be that easy to get all... I mean, in the end, we've got to help restore this village, otherwise they're going to be fucked. And I don't think angering a nearby large town was obviously going to be us is going to help us much. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So, like revolutionizing the whole town so that you can actually create a trading scheme here would be the most beneficial route. All right. So how are we going to go about revolutionizing? You you're talking about different companies. Who are these companies? Um, Edwin wasn't yeah. okay. This. So we've oh. got to we've got it. We basically have three levels to combat. We we have to get uh, we have to get on the side of the miners that live up here. Uh, we've right. got to get on the side of the three major companies that are the biggest competitors to Goldmire, which are the Golden Cog, the Iridium Blade Company, and the Steam Wheel Transport Company. And then, if we can, after that, get individual council members to be on our side to out. Vote, Old Meyer. All right, sure. Or we kill her in her sleep. <coughs> um, you see, now that is a very good backup plan. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. So, so you're not wrong. <laughs> I, All right. I mean, I'd rather not, but. <laughs> I mean, if push comes to shove, we'll just go sick them. <laughs> I can do that, but I think maybe we try to persuade these miners. After all, they are just simple working people. Yeah. That'll be the easiest to get on our side, I think. And that's a good place to start. Because if we need any other backing for the companies, we'll just say, well, your miners aren't happy. <laughs> Alright, well, it's, I mean, who's going to be best? I'm not very good with the whole that words thing. I can scare them, but I don't think that helps. Hey, don't worry. I'll so, check my skills. Leave this to the hatless champion. I have a strong feeling that I do because I have uh, performance and persuasion are plus zero. So. Oh yeah, s same. <laughs> I mean, my persuasion is plus three. So I mean, I could try to do the diplomatic side of things. Yeah, I definitely think you and that, uh... And you and the, Zyron. uh... You Zyron? and the I mean, I mean, plus seven. 
Yeah, yeah, Zara's yeah, better yeah, at this sort of yeah. stuff than I am, <laughs> but still. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that. All right, right. so. I, I think I think we're in agreement for the best first step is to take get the get the hearts of the miners. What time of day is it? It's midday. about midday. Yeah. All right. We need a symbol or a name, not not for ourselves, but to rally this revolution around. I like this. Let me see. What could be the opposite of Goldmire? After hmm. all, Goldmire. Well, it's all about these. These mistreated miners, right? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Uh, I was going to say friends of the earth, but I'm pretty sure that's something else entirely. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's some. Uh, the People's Party? Uh, no, wait, that's getting a bit too close to. <laughs> <laughs> the, yes. the Judean People's Front. <laughs> <laughs> the People's Front of Judea? <laughs> No, we're the Judean People's Front. Um, <laughs> uh, man, thinking of names is really hard. Welcome to my pain. Hammer, but you know. <laughs> hmm. Turquoise when it rusts. Okay. Hmm. What? Oh, what was that, Christy? Like something about turquoise. You can't hear me at all. No, no, yeah, no. Like, we can hear you. It's just... a lot. Yeah, as I said, you turn up your sensitivity in the mic input volume. Yeah. As I said, turquoise something because gold oxidizes, it turns turquoise. That's true. That's I think fair. turquoise is a bit. It's a bit of a long word for the miners. Um. The Ember Turks. I was gonna say maybe like the embers. Turquoise revolution. Embers of, embers of change. Embers of change. Uh, King actually, bird. Sounds <laughs> up with the. Uh, the ember shots. Ooh. Ooh. It would actually sound a little bit like a grass grassroots movement. We got what movement? Grass root. Minor strike redux. <laughs> Full Monty. <laughs> Redacted. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I think. Yeah. We'll just call ourselves the Maya Lurks. <laughs> because. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why are names so hard to think of? I missed a little bit of it, but what are the what what are the cause to our movement? Well, oh, fair. Well. We want to have fair uh, rights for all, because currently the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. It's not necessarily, you know, like socialism, but more equal pay, better working conditions, better living conditions. Free dental. Better free dental, better distribution of wealth, I think. More food, because I imagine people are starving, they tend to do that. No slavery. Oh yeah, yeah, big one. Oh, the broken chain. That's, that's strong. And the then, symbol. Then, then the catchphrase could be, we'll break the chains! Oh, we're we're gonna have like... uh, because this is a mining town. Why we wouldn't call it the Mineral Revolution? I like that! Because that sounds uh, like I they're trying to don't. sell a new brand of water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, it does. Our minerals are from the freshest of mountains. <laughs> <laughs> so fresh. It's not a bad brand of sweets, and then at least it's an, an undercover kind of thing. <laughs> I suppose we're not going to cause the whole city to revolt in a day, no matter how revolting they are. Hey, hey! That should be bad. Um, you all gain a level in bard. Yay! <laughs> you keep oh, this level so you keep like... supplying puns that make the DM sigh. So, uh, <laughs> our longest time actually goes that we plan what is the good name for this 
uh, project? Well, let's just decide on a name and then think of a symbol. And what, like, with that, like, spell that you guys keep on using, like, the, the spell that, like, cleans people, could you use it to, like, oh, make a little press, symbol? Press digitation. Press digitation. Now, give a word to her for creating a, you want to be snappy. What kind of minerals coming out of this, um... Emberstone, the explodey stuff. Emberstone, coal, iron... <laughs> uh, there is a small gold mine here, but it's not particularly yeah. worth the effort to mine it. Oh, it could be the gold breakers. Um... Kick reformation? So How about, um, uh, just hold on, uh, I thought maybe a dying fire revolution? Mm, I like the that. dying fire could work. I like fire that Fire or growing flame? The rolling flame, yeah, I like it, I like it. Do all the right track here. I like the word inferno. I don't know why. That's yeah, it's fair. It's like big fire. I like big fire. Destroys yeah. things. Yeah. Also cooks things really nice. But the soul still burns. Oh dear. And, and it helps deal with inferno. trifling gnomes. There we go. Trifling gnomes. <laughs> There's an idea, the burning soul. The burning soul. Oh. The burning... Operation Burning Soul. The soul oh, of fire. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> burning soul. I like it. I yeah. like it. All right, burning right. soul it is. Okay. And and it could just symbol, be like, a, like the symbol of the city is a uh, diamond on fire, right? Mm -hmm. Diamond surrounded by fire. Why can't this be like coal on fire? Because uh, it far more represents the people than the yeah. upper class. I like that. Yeah. I like that. <coughs> I like that a lot. See, like, also, because it's it a little bit of foreshadow for an industrial oh. revolution. <laughs> what was that, Christy? I said, of course, like a fire and what have you is like the the sort of the middle. You know, it's it is the soul of the city. If that stops burning, then true. Hmm. It's like the center. We could talk about you know the fires of the peoples being stifled by a gold mire and the council and that kind of thing. The life enjoys being siphoned down into their pockets. Mm. Yeah. All right. All right. Can you guys, like, you imagine people try and make that symbol using your spell? Well, I mean, prestidigitation can create a non-magical trinket or illusion in the in illusionary image. Yeah. It can fit in the hand. Yes. And we can, and it also, and prestidigitation can also like, like make a little mark or something on. Oh yes. Places. Other small mark or symbol for an hour. What if? Uh, are, are there like symbols yeah. of the town everywhere? Tell you what, sorry. Yeah. What kind of symbol? Uh, like the the symbol of the town, the burning jewel. Um, <laughs> only forty six percent. It's um, only on a lot of like government owned structures yes. and spots like that. Good. Wow. In which case, uh, we'll try and convince in, in, some uh, of the workers. We'll convince some of the workers to like paint the diamonds black. Yeah, as a sign of revolution. And like yes. fire the spirits. Yeah. All right. This is, this is getting very Book of Exodus right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, Let's go. And then, and and then I take my mighty staff and turn it into a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've all seen Prince of Egypt. Yes. Uh, yes, Pitoris, it's like. Um, yes. 46, 47%, something like that. She's very close to 51. Yeah, but uh, as long as he don't. Uh, she doesn't own, like. Um, more than 50, be it 50.1% uh, of the town, uh, there is still the other councilmen have more power than uh, Goldmire. 
True, they but are we're not united. allowed to convince them. We're not be able to convince them unless we show that there's actual like, weight behind our words. Yes, indeed. So there's no point in threatening a weapon if you don't have the weapon rattling in their face. Yeah, that is true. Very, po very good point. Besides, <coughs> beats Plus, with Goldmire having such a big standing in the city, we need to really find, like, the percentages. Alright. Turn their shit round. But as for right now, I think we're having a march to the miners' court, turning all these all these symbols of the city into our new logo of revolution. Yes. Okay. Like, I can just right. imagine like us us magic lot in the back just walking around. And we're like, you get a symbol. You get a symbol. Get a symbol. <laughs> and suddenly, a symbol. half the town was rested overnight because you guys didn't think this through. <laughs> We thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you guys make your way to the to the miners' district, zone two, on a wonderful little town map here. Yes. Okay. There are various miners that are well, people, you know, dwarves, gnomes, deep gnomes, humans, a couple of half elves. They're milling about the place. Some are going to work. Some are just coming back. They're covered head to toe in dirt and grime and all sorts of stuff. Um, a lot of them have also are like walking behind you and past you because they do work in the city as well in its various forges and things like that. And how do you guys want to go about gathering followers? This is the big question. Hey. Go into this walking come past on. you. Alright, come on, charismatic. Let me see. As we're as we're walking through, are we seeing anyone eating like filthy like filthy stale bread or bits like that? No, everyone just seems to be miserable, tired, and just wants to either A go home, have a semi bath shower just to wash some of the grime off and then relax for the afternoon. Right. Or is, uh, that, oh, is, is there shit, like a I'll little box nearby that I can stand on? There there are several boxes you can stand on, yes. You can have a box. I I will take a box, set it set it in front of me, stand on top of said box, look towards the miners and be like People of the mines, hard workers of this town, hear me and hear your transgression. We are here to bring revolution to this town for you people. I'm gonna whisper to uh Merlon, but I don't think he knows what the word transgression means. <laughs> no, but in any case, <laughs> make a so. persuasion check. In fact, no, actually, oh, just a general good. charisma check, just to see if you oh, grab uh, their attention. Uh, c c c charisma. 17. As you hey. sit there and give off your wonderful array of. They're correct. Well, incorrect uh, semantics, but the meaning is there. Several of the miners what? turn around and look at you and are like, Oh, what? Well, what do you mean? If we can we can fight back? And they start gathering around. She's like, what do you mean? Tell us more. Yeah. Listen to me. What is the one thing you have that the councilmen that pay you so less don't have? Decent house. Nice of beer. <laughs> And in there doesn't smell like rat piss. I've got this duck! Churches! Churches! It's like, you have the one thing that those councilmen no longer have. You have the heart of this town. And you have the soul and passion of this town. You carry it on your shoulders. You bear it in your souls. And you know it be true. Make another charisma check. And some of them are like actually physically checking their pockets and like checking his sleeves. I don't have a heart in oh, it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was fine. It's not like the epic failure. But again, all of them. A good chunk of the crowd, though, start rallying too. It's like, yeah, we work damn hard to keep this city afloat. Even when the war was on, we kept mining and digging and building. It's about time we took back one of ours. 
Exactly what that guy said. What is your name, brother? Crud, I don't have random NPC names generated. <laughs> I am Bystander Ray, until I can find a better name. Bystander Ray? <laughs> My friends, Ray, your very own. He speaks for truth. His soul, his passion, his drive to carry this city is within him. Surely it is not <laughs> him who feels the same way. Think of it. There are so many of you who drive this town and keep it afloat, while there are only some that dare sit on the throne of the council. Ah, uh, where's it gone? It used to be a really great name generator. Oh well. But yeah, you, you really get the crowd rallied to you by this point. And they all start, you know, going, how, how are we going to go about this? Oh, we should just go full on riot mode. No, nah, it's not working. Lay down tools. Take. My, my friends, we must take this one step at a time. If we go, if we act too recklessly, the council will simply send their armies and decimate you without a thought. Your families will be without you, and I'm very sure no one would want that. We start this in the subtle ways. We start by showing this, and I raise my hand and cast Pesadidatation onto my hand to create an enchanted version of the symbol we created from earlier, as if it's like a brand. Yeah. Uh, a few of the people will sit there and go, yeah, yeah, we should, we should band together and rally together, and a few of them then start running off, and you can see on some of the buildings which have been branded, they've, like, taken a lump of dirt or whatever, and they're starting to make edits well, to it as best they can. Surely as mine is a bit of like soot and colust around. They could rub it yeah. on. Yeah, a couple of the miners got like the odd lump of coal that's fallen in their pocket. A couple of the kids are now doing the same with bits of charcoal. You have started at least the seed of a revolution. Fantastic. However, as your speech comes to an end you're approached by a grizzled old dwarf who's missing, you know, his left eye has got a bit of a deep scar across it, so it's all glassed over and white. Uh, colossal bronze beard and a mess of bronze hairs and nice tidy braids. I heard what you said, laddie. I like the uh, cut of your jib. Name's Gregor you, Bronzebeard. I run the uh, Iridium Blade Company. I I go I, I I take a step down from a box. I extend my hand out for a handshake and introduce myself. It is the tightest handshake you've ever had. This man has like a grip of iron. So, I really admire your handshake, brother. That is amazing. I, even though I run the company, I still work the forges and I still make my own weapons. Wow. Um, so, well, you intend you, to take down Goldmire? That's the plan. I mean, the first step is with you, the people. But, of course, the, the next step is a little bit tougher. Aye, and I think we best be discussing that in private. Follow me. And he directs you to a small end, just a little bit further from where you were, called the Grimy Pick. And like some nice. of the people said, it stinks of rat piss, the roof is incredibly low. Any of you that are taller than around about five foot, you have to duck everywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not the best of places. Even the ceiling itself is uneven. You can hear the floorboards creak from upstairs. and You feel any second now could give. God. And if you, God. As you look nervously about it, it's like, I don't worry about it. I don't worry. This, this place creaks and falls down nearly every other Thursday. Nah, we'll be fine this week. What day is it today? It'd Wednesday. be it'd be a Thursday, but not the other Thursday. Oh, My okay. Uh... Don't worry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> all right. brings all over to a table, sits all down, tells um, Martha, the, bark the girl that's working the floor and everything, just to keep the guards out for the time being. If possible. Right. 
So, I like your plan of starting a revolution. Only small hitch in your plan. Um, my company's recently been uh, doing an order for Lady Goldmire, and now the uh, city guard's been upgraded with these fancy uh, mechanical devices. Oh no. Mechanical devices, you say? Aye, uh, they tend to shoot uh, small pellets of metal, we call it shot, over a very long distance. Very effective that like, uh, taking that down like people. Now, brands work. Mm. Tell, I, I even these... came up with uh, a design, and then uh, Goldmeyer had the plan sent to me. Mm. Are these devices powered by anything, or do they just run on their own? Uh, by, uh, we call it gun powder, you might know it as black powder, uh, ember stone dust, uh, anything with a combustible property. In fact, your f uh, points to Tom's character in the group, your friend there's got something similar, although his looks a bit more uh, homemade. And I suppose we all turn to, <laughs> we all turn to Dario, like, just <laughs> <is> in unison. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could we yeah. go about destroying the supplies of this gold stuff? Hmm? Could we go about maybe like destroying the supplies of this stuff? Might make the fight a bit easier. Well, um, she does have. Uh, go ahead and speak to him. Hello. Hello. Hey! Hey! We can hear you. I think it's going to be one of those weeks where the hot weather is just slowly killing the internet connection. Mm. Yes. It's rather hot around this virtual table. Intermittent for me. I can't even see it outside. It's the green circle up here on the speak. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can at least, so... Uh, good. All is good. So, yeah. yeah. Um... Well, Goldmire does have a rather large chunk of the city dedicated to uh, manufacture and production of their own goods. That's where my base of operations is, it's where her foundry is, and various other problems. I'm going to drop the dwarfish accent, by the way. That's okay. fine. Um, that's cool. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of the big problem right now. As much as you want to take out the supply, you've really got to take out the full supply. If you mean the Ember Stone, you could, but you'd probably end up detonating a good chunk of the surrounding countryside as well. Mm. I mean, we want to cause a revolution. We don't want to make it so that the town has to spend the next ten years repairing itself. Yeah, that is true. Which is why maybe we could do like more... I mean, it's not really my style, but couldn't we do more like a passive strike? If none of the workers are producing the shit they need to fire, then, you know. Of course, there would be possibility that uh, we would uh, uh, urge the workers to come to the warehouse where is a lot of emberstone and gunpowder and uh, place various eggs around the town. And maybe explode them. Um, Oh uh, yeah! If we leave none, if we leave none of the town, all our problems are solved. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't mean uh, to explode the whole town off the map. I mean, we could do what we did back in that mine. Yes, that is true. Just we we get we get groups of us, including the miners that are willing to help us. We set explosives in designated locations where the, where the supplies are going to be hit the most. We detonate them simultaneously within a safe location. And when that happens, we sit back and watch the fireworks as if it was a freak accident. And causing God, enough chaos like... for us to ensue in it. Yeah, and um, then we would do just there like, Oh my God, what happened? That is a very good. That is a very good point from Neil, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna say you can cool. do if you wish. Okay, fourteen. He seems yeah. a very trustworthy guy. 
I mean, I mean, my arm's kind of falling off, but it was a good handshake. Oh no, I know what my arm is. You guys, you guys were told that the Iridium Blade would like gob my out of the picture. I don't think killing anyone's the right idea, though. Yeah, I agree. What, what, I don't think blowing it? things up will lead to too many deaths. What, it's just gold mine. The, uh, what was the name of the beardy guy we're talking to again? Uh, bronze Mo beard. Yeah, bronze beard. I forgot what I called. Gave his first name now. I just written down bronze beard. Gregor. Gregor. Thank you. It was Gregor, Gregor. Gregor. bronze beard. Gregory. <coughs> hmm. My friend, I I wonder. I wonder if you might be able to actually help us with part of our plan. Aye, what might that be? You see, I now that, now that we know that the people wish to cause an uprising, we caught wind of three companies that might be willing to team together to at least make sure that their biggest rival happens to lose capital, if you know what I mean. Aye, aye, I get what you mean. Have you... Do you know anything about the Golden Cog Iridium Blade or the Steam Wheel Transport Company? This is the Iridium Blade. I run the Iridium Blade, laddie. We make weapons. <coughs> the other ones, then. <laughs> uh, See, I was well, testing you. You passed the test. <laughs> you're dumb, you dumb half-elves are all the same. Uh, True. All the, the gold substance. <laughs> The Golden Cog, they're mainly based in manufacture and heavy machinery. So if Goldmire wants like new mining equipment made, it's the Golden Cog that will get the contracts. He gets the contracts for all swords, spears, knives, guns, whatever. And the Steam Wheel are the newest company on the block that got bought out by Goldmire pretty much as soon as it was established. And they are in charge of transport. They have some pretty weird things. He's heard of them building something which they're calling a tramway, but he's never seen anything beyond, like, the company's founder, uh, Talis and Stoker, like, mark out a route out of town to the west of here. And sort of come back and seen, like, a proposal for... Doing some groundwork and laying some sort of a railway across. Mm. Well, I think we should actually formulate a proper plan. I don't like going into this. Oh, the nose. I mean, with with us having connections directly now to the Iridium Blade, would it be possible if we could potentially get at least the Golden Cog on our side, who manufacture the tools needed to mine? I'll at least stop production. The Iridium Blade could then generate weaponry for the people to help rebel in case military does get involved. More so for protection rather than actual use. And I, then as for I'm the... fairly certain the miners around here like, can take care of themselves. Yeah, oh, they've okay. got huge fucking picks. Oh, well, that's a good point. But this steam will. But this. My potential proposal for this. Steam, like, steam it's transportation trend. route. I wonder if this proposal has gone through and they've been screwed over like we have by Goldmire. Because that could be our way in. Hmm. Possibly. Uh, Gregor points out that it has gone through because he's already, like, gone forward and, like, done the, um, routes that would have been proposed. But so far, like, it seems to be stuck in some sort of constant limbo. They have right. a factory here in town, in Zone 3 on the map. They are making something. There's a lot of noise, a lot of machinery. Some of the stuff from Golden Cog goes over. A lot of his own materials go over as well. Mm. And he does like to keep an eye on partners in the city. I mean, him and the chair of the Golden Cog get on well, but this Talos and Stoker he knows nothing about, beyond the fact that he's some sort of a smart human, and even then that's not giving away a lot of information for him. That's a point. If, if you guys are in contact with one another, 
Is there a way you can potentially make an audience between you three and us? I think we might be able to work something out, although I think it'd be best, lad, if you contact myself, uh, Wolstead Cogman, and Talison Stalker uh, individually for an arranged meeting. I agree. Meeting with, meeting with the pack elders by ourselves will help us. Yes. Hmm. That At least we can get our individual possible. points across and find out what their problems are. Indeed. Alright, then I guess say we talk to this gold cog fella. I agree. And see how gold those cogs really are. Ah! <laughs> 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 it's terrible. Okay. It takes you a little while to go from there to get into the golden cog itself. Uh, you do spend some time arguing with the guy at the gate, but you guys have got decent Christmas scores to get yourselves let in. And eventually you start you're wor working your way through this colossal factory floor where you can see various uh, machines in different states of assembly so it's like an assembly line process going all the way down all of which are branded with Goldmire and Embermine City emblems um, a couple of the things they seem to be making would be from our perspective steam engines or something of that ilk but really weird to you guys' characters. Hmm. Hmm. You know, yeah, huge... sort of like... yeah, it's really hard to get across how amazing it would be to see a steam engine where you've never seen one before. It's horrible. So loud and noisy. Yeah, it doesn't smell like an animal. Treat by it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, mm -hmm. it depends on which side of the coin you sit when it comes to the machinery. But anyway, eventually you work your way through to a much cleaner, tighter office room, and inside you're greeted by a small gnome, uh, who's happy oh, chipper, good. seems to have had way too many coffees this morning. It's like, oh, hello, hello, my name is Wilson Cogman, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Uh, how can I help you today? Uh, Mr. Cogman, uh, we understand that you are the proprietor of the Golden Cog. Ah, yes, 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 I made my first machine with a golden cog and the whole thing stuck. In fact, uh, some of the clocks you've seen around town, those are my designs, my inventions, and they keep perfect time. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, for one, amazing work. Um, but I wish to ask you something related about business. Oh, business, a cornerstone of this city and the cornerstone of all industry. So, what kind of business were you after? What kind of a machine do you want from me? You want to... Big well, mining drill? You see... The machine that we're looking for is a machine... Let's say that's capable of overthrowing a system. Uh, uh, I'm afraid I'm now following you, friend. What do you mean? <laughs> Simplify it! <You> Sorry! <laughs> DM's trying to work out where this accent's from, he can't even think where. Hey, sh hey, sport, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> Pretty much, it's like, a little bit New York, a little bit Boston, it's everywhere. Cash it now and get your arm flaying too, man. <laughs> oh, good God, this starts to remind you. Um, remind me of, um... I just, like, I, I just, like, get super serious. I, I like... Uh, I, I just look at him and just go... Uh, we understand that Goldmire commonly owns 46% of this, of this city. We are here to put an end to that. Oh really? Well good luck with that! She's nearly bought out the entire city at this rate, it's just waiting for those final few deals to go through, but thankfully everyone just keeps blocking the deal. She's already bought this my company. Why we've, and this is why we've come to you. As much as we know the uh, Goldmire was on the verge of owning the majority of this place, we understand that there are some individuals around here that may benefit if, I don't know, something were to go awry within her percentages. Well, that would certainly lose us some stark value. I mean, he starts running over to like a graph he's got set up and he's running his. Uh, finger down and try to trace out a line 
Yeah, yeah, that could work, that could work. Oh, that'd be very dangerous, though. Very dangerous indeed. Armed with those new Iridium Blade musket things. Oh, dear. That might be rather bad. I hope you have a plan for this revolution, besides just getting me to not build machines for her, because unfortunately I need to make money and to keep my business. Of course, when we have no intention of causing your business any problem. Put it this way. What if without... Let's, let's put it this way. Is, is Goldmire in any way, shape or form stopping you from doing anything that you would think would benefit your company and your vision for your company? Well, yeah, I'd like to help out the steam wheel guy make his really weird contraptions. I want to build new mining equipment to go deeper into the mines. Maybe, you know, find some new veins, find some new ores, make things a bit safer. Improve transportation, improve sanitation. I mean, have you seen the houses they live in? Exactly. Oh, working bastards. All, and all of that is being stopped because Goldmire is this close owning so much for fake she can dictate everything go ahead and make a persuasion check oh, oh. Nope. As, as much as I want to help you friend I really can't help you all that much uh, I really don't have that much I could potentially give to help you uh I mean, I mean, if, I if you want to hit, if you want to hit at Goldmire directly, um, I designed her frowns, I designed its layout, and he hands you a blueprinted map so you can see the inner workings. It's broken up to various chambers, and much like his own factory, it's meant to be um, like a continuous loop of raw material to finished product, going quite steadily. The only thing that really makes you concerned. Is like the actual foundry area has a mark on it just labeled it. What does this mean when when it says it? <laughs> that's uh, that's a little bit classified, and that my thing. I was just told to put it on the blueprints from uh, Talos and Stoker. You know that steam wheel guy. He might have some more information for you. And that's all I can really say on it. I I, I look towards my uh, our blood hunter and I I look towards you and I just go like, okay, got an idea. I want you yeah. to go animalistic on his ass and intimidate the living shit out of him. I we well, need right to know now. what the fuck we need to know what the hell this is. This could be our way in. Oh, I mean, um, can I? Insight. I mean, can I insight? Check, can I like try to discern how likely he is to help us? Yeah, yeah with the inside check, you can do. Sixteen. He's he's willing to help you. Just needs to make it sound worthwhile. I mean, betraying someone who owns his company is not going to help. Hmm. If you put him in a position where he really can't refuse. Might work. Hmm. Now, <laughs> crazy idea in my head, but what if I told you <coughs> that if we, I don't know, were able to cause some mischief for Goldmire, causing her to potentially lose some of her equity, what if we could get you appointed somewhere high on the council? I don't need appointing somewhere high on the council. I'm already quite high on the council. Like, high on, enough under... in order to see your dreams come to reality. High I enough don't... to the point where you don't need approval. You can just make it happen. All I need to be is free of Goldmire. So just, if you're going to destroy Goldmire's industry, just go ahead and destroy Goldmire's industry. I'm just telling you, it's going to be dangerous. Sanitation <laughs> 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 machines, <laughs> education, <laughs> provisions, public order. <laughs> oh, the aqueduct. Shut up. But yeah, you know, if if you're gonna take down Goldmire, take down Goldmire. Don't don't try and get me involved. You know, I just make the things. So, is that how it's gonna go then? So when the workers rise up, 
when they uh, finally take arms and decide to put their picks from stone to skulls. You wouldn't mind your skull being one of the few they bash in? <laughs> I don't think they'll be using picks on my end of things. Uh, I think they'll most likely be uh, using the drills I've made and nearly got rid yeah. of the shipment. <laughs> using the drills you made on you. Oh, wouldn't that be ironic? So that's, uh, so you would rather go with the losing tide in the war, eh? I mean, I know you're going to say you're going to be neutral and all, but you kind of have to take a side. Because anyone who's not going to be one of us is going to be one of them. And when the new order is established, I'm afraid those of the old order might not fare so well. It's all very well and good saying you want to keep your industry. Stay out of it and, you know, just, you know, lay low and things will be fine in the end. Things won't be so fine in the end when your whole factory and all your bits and bogs and stupid fucking machines are just rubble. <laughs> so I advise you do what we tell you to. You assist us or you're against us. Go ahead and make an intimidation check because he's a bit... Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was cool. Mm. He's, he's now... Oh, oh, nice. oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. yes. Perfect. That, that was nearly bloody maximum as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a point there, actually. <laughs> But again, that's that's all the help I can give. You know, my my crews bring up the ore, it goes to the foundry, and I just design the place. Uh, but that it thing, it's something that Talos and Stoker guy brought. I don't know how he's done it. Apparently, it's something that is able to keep the forge running twenty four seven without ever needing fuel. Does it need emberstone? Does it need coal? Does it need wood? Does it need anything? Just happily runs by itself. So why power. does... Oh. I, I've, I've hooked up the steam turbines and the generators to keep all the hammers in that moving, but I haven't actually seen what powers the boiler. I just put the tank on and let the whole thing run itself. It's really? a self-regulating, self-feeding machine, whatever he's made. I want to know what it is. Alright, well... Something, something so like tells me our next... Can... Something tells me our next visit is to the Steam Wheel Transport Company. Yes, that sounds like it would be a good idea. And of course, you'll be with us in the coming revolution, won't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, turn some of my drills on Goldmire's walls. Good. Because if there's enough of us, there won't be need for any bloodshed, and your hands will be clean. But if you're not so efficient, then maybe needs to get dirty. And we don't want that, do we now? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, scary lady. And, like, taps the side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> she... what, can, he, can he even reach that far? Like, is Maya crouched? <laughs> she, she... And that's Probably how like I picked this whole thing, him. like, you stooping over to... Yeah, like, like literally, like, 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 him. She grins that... to reveal, like... Maybe a little too many canines in her. Oh, in her scary, <laughs> scary lady, good lady. Okay, yeah. bye bye. I've I've got some work to do and some pictures <coughs> to change. Bye bye. Mm, I've always liked the taste of gnome. Right, guys, <laughs> let's go and. Uh... Yeah. On the way out, I use precipitation to make like the mark of our rebellion on his door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's burnt into as the if, woods. As if to leave a mark saying we'll be back. <laughs> no gangsters, you. All right, Look at then. us go. So, hey, uh, think you you guys on. Let's go talk to Talos and Jaffe. Why, why do I think at some point like someone's going to come to us and be like, you come here on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be honest, God. that did pop in my head when I was trying to figure out how... This guy would run the company, but like <laughs> New York gangster just works so much better. <laughs> okay, right. Oh, it's Steam Company. Oh, um, as you guys reach the Steam Company, of course, um, the place is locked up. It seems absolutely pitch quiet. There are a couple of uh, gold mines guards out front, armed with these new fangled mechanical devices. 
to which, um, Dario, you know what they are. They are, in fact, basically muskets. Although they have got small little bayonets attached to the end. Ooh. Compensating. Ooh. They don't seem <laughs> any better than your current design, but you reckon if you spent some downtime in the future, you could probably make something even better. So, anyway, but what do you guys wish to do? Currently, the guards are refusing you entry. Alright, mm. then where is the Master Talison? Uh, I'm afraid Mr. Stoker is not here at present. You'll have to uh, come back at some point tomorrow. This seems like a fitting voice for a guard, so we'll stick with it. It is. It'll be good. Yeah, it's good. Well, uh, going to start a revolution. <laughs> so, Chris said she was having trouble hearing you. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, but again, they're not letting you in at all. Oh dear. So they're, they're like sort of proper normal guards with these, like, like, okay, so are they like sort of normal guards with like additional, like, golemy type things, or are they like inside, like, like sort of controlling like the actual sort of golem thing itself? What? No, no, they're just bog standard guards, but as opposed to being armed with like spears oh, okay. and shields like you used to seeing town guards, yeah, these guys are actually armed oh, with okay. rifles. Oh, okay, sorry. My, I was just trying to imagine it and I just... So where do these golems go from? I'm sorry, I... I look, I know There's now, There's an so. idea. I but, like that. And they suddenly have golems. Um, shit. Um, okay. Right, Crap. well, can we like reconvene a little way away? Is like... Alright, how do we want to play this? Hmm. Well, I, mean... I don't think uh, Mr. Thingy's in. Didn't they say he was busy marking stuff up outside of town to the east? To the west. So he, he's already made west. his survey and everything else. Alright. Hmm. So... We could try and get his address out of someone. I mean, I hmm. I do have something that might help. I I do have suggestion as a spell. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> oh right. Oh, That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. you suggest a guard. You could suggest that we is. might be like in like quality assurance inspectors. <laughs> yeah. The need emergency entrance into the facility to make sure everything is running at, at optimal standards. And if all else fails, I can uh, use. Or at least for peace within! Oh, oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> well, funny you should say that. I can use Fae Presence to try and scare them all. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Yes. oh. <laughs> I or, think or, you have or, that or, ability. Or charm, or charm them. Uh, yeah, I have a presence starting at first level. Your patron bestows upon you the ability to project the beguiling and fearsome presence of the Fae. Nice. And yeah, forgot you had that. Yeah, I was going to say I can either charm them or frighten them. Why not we just go with frighten straight off the bat and save ourselves some spells? All right. That's well, first we'll try. Well, first we'll try with a suggestion route. If that doesn't right. work, then. Um, I'll bring, yeah, I'll do that. You'll bring the hammer now. Fey charm. Uh, well, Fey charm or Fey fear, whichever Speaky works best. Fey. I never knew you were a fairy, Nils. Uh, it's a uh, it's a long story. Her, Did your mother yeah. sleep with the dryad or what? <laughs> um, n no. As I, I said, it's. Of wood. <laughs> it, it's a, it, it's a, it's something I rather keep to myself for the time being. Ah, sure thing. I've I've hunted a couple fair in my time. Quite fun things to hunt, really. Uh, uh, all right. It tastes uh, rather nice on taste. All they <laughs> do. Will's <laughs> face is just turning white as a sheet as you're describing all this. <laughs> I got, 
A blink, a blink dog sandwich. Mm -mm. Uh, um. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll. Look, we'll, we'll try suggestion first, and if that doesn't work, then I'll bring out the tune. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. Okay, Siren. We're, we're doing this. I, I, we I recommend going with what Tom says because it's a good idea. Put the fear and dangers of cold dust. <laughs> okay. Go for it. I, I, I like the it. sound of this. So suggest, put a suggestion in their head that something. Put the suggestion in that the cult that there has been a recent worry of cold disruption, and that us as inspectors need to get involved. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, so we're call inspectors, and there's been a recent incident with cold, dusty explosions, and we need to. And yeah, and actually, Ma um, Dario, you seem to know a thing or two about a thing or two about uh, like gunpowder and emberstone and things. You can you can back us up with with like your knowledge of the stuff. <coughs> I, I, I'm effectively the expert here, so you, you're, you're the government officials, and I'll be the expert, the crazy expert. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll run with it. Yeah. So you are going to be like uh, there is two government experts, and then there's a junk rat. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Does it off a little too well? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, Zyr well. so. So yes. you get one guard, I get the other. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Right. Sounds like a plan. Suggestion time. Yes. Can you click that suggestion spell? Huh? Oh, I know you've actually used it. Okay, Ooh. so thirteen and and eleven. Okay, this could be fun. Where where where's that thing? And we're gonna keep the secret from you two. God. Oh my! <laughs> fuck it up! 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 Shit! 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 Just double checking. Uh, okay, so you give them the excuse of you know steam dust explosions and all the rest of it, coal dust, and uh, they sit there for a couple of seconds, let it digest in their heads and. No, no, we're fine. We don't need any darn inspectors coming in here telling us what to do, man. Just piss on out of it. Go on. Come back in the morning. A... And we might, uh. Number two. Hmm. I do have sir, another one. Sir, sir. Two. <laughs> Oi! Listen here. Have you ever heard of the truck me a steam incorporated agency? No. <laughs> Because they don't exist anymore! Because they foully ignored the dangers of coldest. Go ahead and make an intimidation check. With an advantage, because they are confused by, like, a company? Never heard of them before? Killed by a steam explosion? No. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, they sit there and converse good. amongst themselves for a second. Like, yeah, yeah, we, we really should. Yeah, definitely should. Okay. Uh, they open the door just a tad for you. Just enough for you to, like, squeeze in. Yeah, apologies. We're just going to let you in. Please don't say anything. Don't bother the boss if you see him. Don't bother anyone. Just act like you own the place. Get, go on in. Apologies. Okay. A thousand pardons. So, okay, son. Don't worry. I won't mention you in my report. Th that's going in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. So you guys are now let into the Steam Wheel Transport Company's warehouse and factory and all the rest of it. Um, they are indeed starting to build something that looks like a railway. To the left of the gate, you can see two sets of tracks that are about six and a half feet apart so we're dealing with uh, broad gauge railway 
and there is a, some sort of a weird contraption at one end. It's got several sets of wheels, pistons, chimney and everything else. Dario, this is absolutely fascinating to your um, technological mind. This thing is turning steam into power into motion. All in one machine. And don't tell me I'm breaking up again, because I'm not going to have a chance to type all this out. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, this like, <laughs> off instantly. Uh, but currently it, sits, it currently sits idle at this point in time. Over at the right, however, there's a couple of warehouses they have set up. Um, to which you can see the light eking out of the furthest one away. And you can hear someone talking and something talking back but it sounds like um wafts you, you know when you open the oven you get that sort of warmth kind of a noise oh yeah uh, yeah. yeah you're getting that every now and again as it speaks you hear this sort of woof, 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 woof. i try and like um focus my hearing and listen in go ahead and make a perception check because of my heightened perception because i'm a dog girl yeah sure thing. um <laughs> Oh, your perception is only to smell, isn't it? No, it's uh, it's it's hearing and smelling. Oh, there you go. Then you get advantage. It's not to do. it's not seeing, sadly. That's a real shame. Nineteen. Um, you can right. make it the human half of the conversation, not so much the the wafting other bit. Um, the human sitting there saying like, "No, no, just calm down, breathe in." And out. You need to control yourself, little one. Control yourself. Oh. Can't get too hot. Got to keep yourself cool. Got to keep yourself calm. But yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a cold fight for being such a good boy. Who is a good boy? So, what do you guys wish to do? I, I just look at our blood hunter that's obviously like kinked into something. I'm like, hey, what 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 can you hear? Uh. I, I'm going to move a little bit away so that the people behind the contest are like, Byron, he, whoever he, this Tarzan fellow is, he's got like a, a like, like another fella or a pet in there. He's feeding. He might be the source of the power. You're like the you're like sneaking shit, aren't you? Can't you go and spy on them? That's a good idea, but I think our I think our expert should do it. But toi, Notorious, well, we have a mission for you. Okay. I meant Batoris, that's why I was talking to you, I wasn't talking to you, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, wasn't paying attention because I didn't think uh, you were talking to me. Oh, uh, well, I was, I, was, I was addressing the road. You talked but... to me while, well, yeah, you were talk, yeah, you, you talking, talking to, everyone, to you while looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, basically, Tarzan, whoever this fellow is, um, He's got. He's clearly talking to someone else in there, like a little feeding them coal, I guess. I don't know. Mm. But if you can maybe like sneak in, have a look, and come back. Sure, I can. Do Spicy. I need to make um, a stealth check? Yep. Go ahead and make a stealth check for me as I just update the map for you. See spot. Oh. Oh. As you Fuck. start making your way across the courtyard, you trip Shit. over a bit of rail or a bit of steel that you didn't see, make a ton of noise, either just you shouting or you just full on like toe ping. And you eventually hear this breathy thing start speaking louder and louder and louder. And. Um, Talos is like, no, 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 no! Oh, Jesus Christ! Bursts out the door, hits the deck, and tells you all to get the F down before I have the guards come and kill you. And then the uh, warehouse uh, explodes. I disengage her and I just. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> the warehouse explodes? Oh no. I need you all, please, to make dexterity saving throws. Kitty, oh, why? No! Kitty, why? <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> the warehouse oh, um, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the cat has done goofed. Yes. 
what happened. Like, I, I can just imagine like you doing a Tom and Jerry and just tripping over everything and we're like gritting our teeth for every chunk. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh... Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for those guards outside. <laughs> Like, oh, they're, oh, yeah, they they're are. just standing still. <laughs> okay, well, thankfully, you guys actually only take half damage from this, so be grateful. God, no! Oh, fucking hell. Uh, what would that be? It would actually be... Half damage, 70! <laughs> <laughs> 15 points of damage. Uh, I mean, oh. yeah, um, if you've got any resistance to, like, bludgeoning or piercing, again, that's halved as like splinters and chunks of the warehouse hit you and various debris. Hmm. Well, is it a bed dragon? Is it come back to haunt us? <laughs> oh no. Alright, sadly I only get resistance in my wolf form and oh, no. I don't think I get much uh much of um, resistances. No, your stuff doesn't kick into like level nine, I think. So we get half like. of thirty. So 15. yeah, so fifteen points of damage. So I'm in fourteen health. Yeah, it's yep, quite a, my health quite a big hard. explosion. <laughs> <laughs> but as the just... dust settles, <laughs> and you know, you guys will start. Slowly pulling yourselves out of the dirt to like, what was that? Um, but Taurus, you are picked up by this human, now blackened with dust, hair a complete mess. He was wearing like a pretty decent shirt and waistcoat, now ruined <laughs> by your pathetic stealth thing. He grabs you by the car and is like, why? Why are you here? Why now? Why did you upset the baby? I I am right. I'm really sorry about the, what happened, but um, I'm usually much more better at this. But this time, um, there was just this. I think it was a railing. I hit my toe on. So, yeah. <sighs> he slaps you, just throws you back to the floor. <laughs> Wants to call for the guards, but currently can't. He starts rushing back into the smoke. Starts digging his way through. Calls out for something in a language you don't know. Okay. Uh, is there any way that is, it would be... Um, so it's not common, draconic, celestial, infernal, or sylvan. Nope. And it's not orcish or dwarvish. Also, nope. It's, it's not a giant primordial or undercommon. It's a... There's a teeny bit of primordial, but it's a bit... Oh, can we see the creature? No, nothing uh, abyssal? Well, after a while, like, the dust settles and everything, and then you realise what he's worth talking to. It's a tiny little flame elemental. Oh, so it's almost like we're using the same alphabet, but he's speaking a different language. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like um, how there's a little bit of Latin <coughs> in like French and in Italian yeah. and Spanish and all that. Alright. Well, I'll... My F will get up and like s try and speak primordial. And be, and be like, hey, calm down, little fella. It's all right. Calm down. I'm sort of like making calming motions. It swears at you in Ignan. Wow. Whoa. Okay. But, but sure. you get the gist of what it just said. And even Talison's like, language. Hey, come on, little fella. It's all right. Wait. Is this a little fella? Is, it, is he just like little small or little young? Um. Little small, like he can hold. Talison's got him in like both hands. Ooh, 
But is oh, wow. he wearing but, anything to protect himself, or is it just grabbing it's, a fire hydrant? It's, it's not burning him at all. Seems to be this kind of bond that he's not burning Talison. I take it that you're Talison, the owner of the what company was this again? The Steam Wheel Transport Company. Yeah. The Steam. The Steam, Steam Wheel Transport Wheel. Company. The, yes, I am Talison Stoker, owner of the Steamboat Company, and this right here is my baby, which you guys woke up from his night terror, which I was trying to get him back to sleep in, and now blew up my latest creation, gesturing to this mangled mess of steel around the baby, and again, the smoke and everything's still starting to clear. A few of the guards come in with muskets, and you hear them all click, cock, ready. Oh, the guards are here. Yeah, the guards now finally that... turn up after the explosion scars. They realise, oh, they weren't, they weren't yeah. inspectors. Crap. <laughs> I was like, in all, in all fairness, having like a mini, a mini flame elemental in a place full of explosive materials isn't exactly the smartest of ideas. It wasn't an explosive uh, material. It was a pressure vessel. God. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> Yours, for waking him up. Oh, it's your fault for bringing him in here in the first place. <laughs> and also, I think we have uh, figured out what is uh, the way he is making those machines work. Alright. That's, that, that's a point. Is this like the power source of the of a furnace? Well, this powers my factory, which you now partially demolished, thank you. I would <sighs> like to go with the idea of partially redecorated. <laughs> he's, he's not in the mood for your shenanigans, he's actually ordering guards now to surround you, arrest you, and take you very far away from here, as he tries to now calm down his baby, which is getting quite hot. Even he's like, this is um... starting to hurt. I need somewhere to okay. put him okay. down where he won't burn anything. Okay, guys, calm emotions or fake presence? I could do one or the other. I'm pretty sure that this is just talk or about. Or do we want to fight the guards? No, we don't want to fight the guards. <laughs> I don't think. Turn on the fake charm. Alright, I'm good. Turn yeah, on the fake charm. Fae charm. Uh, so I'm going to charm the guards? Okay, what's your spell save DC at present? My spell save DC, I think, is 13. It is. Okay. Yes. Uh, again, going to keep it secret from you. Oh, God. It's going to go wrong. Everything's okay. going to go bad. There we go. After a while, uh, you were doing fear, weren't you? Well, I mean... Is it fear or um, charm? Charmed like or frightened. Yeah. So, well, what's preferable in this situation? Charmed. Okay, charm. Yeah, charm. charm the guards. <coughs> okay, they they start to lower their weapons and even uh, Stoker's like, <sighs> wait a second, they're trying to. Oh, you cheeky little spellcaster, you! He we're not the only the ones with hidden things. <laughs> he made the check. Uh, unfortunately, the guards all blow their weapons, and he looks at the guards. Uh, it's going to be pointless talking to my guards now because you've managed to charm them by <coughs> means I don't understand. But good. my baby and I need to sit down. I for don't understand a second. Them either. Right, he, well, when he's talked to you, he he got he. He's now at this point like, could could someone give me some wood or a lump of steel, something, anything, please? The baby is burning my hands. Is there like a lump of wood nearby? There, there is several like bits of driftwood. Oh, and then, uh, I'll, then I'll like th uh, toss a large chunk of my shoulder and like offer it up to the baby, <laughs> sort of like <laughs> at an arm's length because I don't want to get burned. He, he puts the baby on it and this flame elemental, you can see it now, it's like a living 
bit of flame, really. And it's just clinging on to the log, but it's giving you evil eyes. I am very much reminiscent of, like, uh, the demon from Hal's Moving Castle. Mm. I, oh, didn't, hey. I didn't think Calcifer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, and... Uh, Stoker takes a log off of you, pops it down next to him, sits down himself. So, you've woken up half the city with the explosion. What do you want to talk to me about whilst my ears are still half ringing? Well, half the city. What about half the city? The half that you haven't woken up yet? How about well, the half that we were willing to undermine? So, it seems like... Um, a certain gold mine has more than an unreasonable amount of profit and uh, ownership of the city. Uh, yeah, she does have a ridiculous amount of ownership. <coughs> well, she bought out my company like as soon as I found it. Bloody thing! Well, say, well, we have plans to try and uh, overthrow her. We've already got the backing of the two other companies and a lot of the miners. With you, that would make the three most powerful things, aside from the council, against uh, Goldmire. And will give us swing enough to convince the other council members to sign with us. And then you'll be able to operate freely and have your own company again. Even your precious little baby would be safe and sound, and no one would be none the wiser. Looks at the baby for a second, looks back at you. To be honest, the only thing I have to worry about with Goldmire is not this thing, it's his bigger brother. Oh. Did you great. just say bigger brother? Yes, you heard me, a bigger brother. Look, I'm one of the oh, few people shit. that has access to these wonderful, amazing creatures, and he says something, um, Edwin, you can understand him because he speaks in primordial. Mm. And it's it's basically like that. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Is that a good boy? And gives it a lump of wood just to, for it to chew on and calm down. <coughs> and mm. yeah, so I don't don't ask me how I have a way of controlling and taming elemental beings like this. Goldmire has a way of bringing them forward, or at least finding them really conveniently. That's concern, to be honest, though. Very much so. Yes. Like, we already knew that Goldmire's pet was that weird green... What was it? A seeker? Gazer. That was it. Gazer. So, if, so if she's, already if she's able to have a gazer as a pet, I wouldn't be surprised with her being able to supply elementals. So, as much as I like, um, well, I guess appreciate these uh, little flamey guys, it won't be very good for the whole city when she conjures too many for herself to control and ends up burning the city down. It's not the burning of the city, that's the problem though, it's what just happened here only on a much grander scale, or it moving, I mean and he gestures to the machine that's on the tracks that thing alone, if it got any decent speed up, would rip through that wall and just keep on going. I don't know where it will stop. Probably in the Iridium Blade Company's back wall. I'm not sure they'd appreciate that. I don't think they'd appreciate it either. But again, I'm. this is what I've been trying to work on for months. It's trying to make this safe. I'll come and sort out. Uh, so that's why it's taken so long for your plans to come to fruition. Yes. Yeah, I, mm. I need to work on how to get this thing to work. Well, you mentioned that little guy's bigger brother. <sighs> yeah, it's in Goldmire's foundry. It basically what powers the whole place. It's actually one of these guys fully, I suppose, grown. If elemental can grow, I suppose so. You know, they eat, which implies they grow. I wouldn't say they eat, it's more like they convert matter to energy, it's fascinating. Well, isn't that just eating, though? Yeah, but eating, in our case, creates waste. They create zero Look, waste. No ash! This is too much it's Too much science for me. Let, let's just... Do we need to take care of this big elemental? 
Uh, yeah, yes and no. I mean, the the system that Cogman built on his boiler keeps the whole pressure regulated. So he's got valves which I don't even know how he's made them. Uh, but if you take um, because of the way the elemental has to be bound, it's kept by two pegs. If you take the pegs out, uh, the elemental will just go back to its own plane. All right, that's a great one. Where are these pegs? So they ride by it? I don't know. They're somewhere in the build, in the facility. All right, well, I guess it's better than nothing. Might be in the same room. Might be in a different room. It takes a couple and of seconds is... to try and make his ears pop. And, oh, I can now sort of hear the world. I suppose this would cripple her, then. Well, if you take out the foundry, she literally cannot make anything. Alright, this is agreeable. Well, the thing is, though, will you join our cause and help take back the city for the people? Looks back at the destroyed warehouse, the partially destroyed one next door, his boiler... In, in all honesty, no, I think you're on your own. I'm not going to interfere with what you want to do. If Goldmire falls, I can take my company back. What's, what's left of it? Uh, if we release that big elemental, um, and if we could control it, we could actually point it to this direction. So you wouldn't have anything left. Hmm. I'm fairly certain the elemental will be more eager to go back to its own plane than help us. I'm, I'm only just thinking of one problem with this whole idea. If we unpin this elemental and this elemental goes back to the plane and pretty much just shuts down everything, won't it shut down everything for you and the other major no, companies? No, no, it, shuts down, it, it shuts down Goldmine's foundry. The one yeah. she owns, not anyone else's. Well, let's fucking turn it off! <laughs> <coughs> Where's the off switch? <laughs> well, two pegs, apparently. And if it gets out of control and starts to wreak havoc, then I'll bite it. I don't think you want to bite it. Alright, then I'll cut at it with my claws. I don't think you want to do that either. I don't think you want to be anywhere near an elemental when it's really angry. I mean, well... touche. Let's just, let's just say we have our ways of dealing with pesky critters. Hmm. They All right. Waves you off like, just fine. Leave me alone. I've got things to fix now. Oh. And so... you, he says the little flame elemental, picks up the little bit of wood. You are going to the backup bed. And he walks over to the strange machine and dumps it in the firebox in there. And for the love of God, go to sleep. So, and should we <laughs> actually neg? Uh, should we? To be honest, lads, I don't really mind the fact that he's not on our side. We've got the other two, and he's already been helpful enough. Should yeah. we, our next move be actually that we would uh, go to find, go to find this elemental, and yeah. um, I'd say why not free it. So find out what these pins are all about. Yeah. Yeah, we'll free the elemental, and that'll be a big blow to her, and then we'll um, organize our main, I guess, demonstration. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going right. to say assault, because assault applies when we're going like, to attack anyone. Oh, that's yes. the point. Bill, can you, just, can you just tell the guards to just, uh, like, pick, like, take their pants off? Uh, so by, the, by the time they're on charm, they just look at each other and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Um, just, just help Talison glare up the mess, and, and, uh, and don't arrest us. <laughs> like, uh, I... To, to make it look more convincing, I just cast Pestiditation around the place to clean bits up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of them just don't you blankly, a few nod. A couple seem to mumble, uh, watch me, lady. Um. Okay. And they Thank get back on with what they 
what you have requested for them to do. Until the charm wears off, which at this point it's like, who, what, eh? Uh. But by that point, you guys will be long gone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, that's a wonderful spot to have a break for this evening. Yes. yes oh, boy. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. <sighs> So, with that, for the sake of the YouTube pod, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe on the YouTube jazz. Those of you watching on Twitch, uh, don't go anywhere. We should be back in just a moment. We'll be here, so feel free to chat with people.